Hey guys, it's me, Pokemon J Bear HD, and today we have week seven of the Hive Kakuna, where we are facing the Oklahoma City Thunderous and their coach Mio, who I have played once before, that being in uh, Weedle playoffs last season. However, I did hack him early game to where he didn't really have a chance to win. So, definitely have been looking forward to this game all season, however, uh, while we've been having a rough go uh, lately, he's actually been having a not-so-great season, and so I know that he's not the most motivated at this point, or, so uh, I'm afraid that this battle won't be, you know, quite the quality that that I was hoping for at the beginning of the season as we both <laughs> we both are not playing to the level that we were the last time we faced off so that's really unfortunate but regardless I, you know I imagine we're both going to give it our all here and hopefully our teams don't hold us back too much to where it can be a, a solid game and hopefully a, a non-haxy game this time since I definitely hacked him out of any chance of winning and so our team is unchanged, being the Mega King is gone, Keldeo, Sylveon, Z Metagross, Gliscor, Z Salazzle, Serena, Z Aerodactyl, Z Curum, Umbreon, and Lantern. While Mio's team is the Z Zygarde, Mega Scizor, Nitto Queen, Z Thunderous T, Cobalion, Gardevoir, Z Sneasel, Yancey, Swellow, Trevenant, and Vaporeon. So, it is definitely still a threatening team, and I think at least, well, you know, when I, obviously the top two bonds are very threatening, being the Zygarde and Mega Scizor, those are always huge threats that you always have to be prepared for. And then, after that, I think what I'm most fearing is the combo of Sneasel and Thunderous T, just because... I think that those two in combination really can take out what I would possibly bring for each other. So that's really something that I am very cognizant of in my building, but regardless, you know, the big, the biggest threats are always going to be the Mega Scizor and Zygarde. And uh, let's get into this team, which leads off with Mega Kangaskhan and the Mega Kangaskhan is EV2 outspeed adamant Zygarde because I want it to be adamant and that's purely because the calcs told me that I can get two at KOs that, that I might not be able to with uh, Jolly so I wanted to run this adamant with return ice punch fire punch sucker punch it covers you know, the, the main threats, like I said, with their times four weakness moves, and then return just hits everything else really hard, and Sucker Punch hits what's faster. Pretty straightforward. Then next up we have an Assault Vest Metagross running Earthquake, Ice Punch, Bullet Punch, Hidden Power Fire, and uh, unfortunately, so I've already done the battle, so I'm noticing that I guess when I transferred this over to, or when I, when I was doing this, I, I think it's when I was on like battle area or something was when I looked at the team again. It made it hidden power fire IVs even though, I, you know I'm a level hundred so it shouldn't be, it should be full IVs but, yeah. Uh, so instead of, um, you know speeding adamant scissor which was what I was trying to go for with. 250 speed I'm actually speed tying it which I don't think should come into play but you know I noticed that only uh, when I got into the battle so that is unfortunate but uh, I have the 24 EVs in special attack to 28 KO and max HP scissor all the time so you know if he's running max HP and special defense investment then you know it's not going to quite work but that means it's weaker to the rest of my team, so that's not a big issue. And uh, at least this, you know, this kind of lures it in. But then uh, 
max attack is so that I could bullet punch for the best amount of damage to the two fairies in Gardevoir and uh, Sneasel. And then uh, Ice Punch hits a good chunk of the team, being the Zygarde if it switches in on me, or the Thunderous, which this is a you know, switch into, or just, you know, gonna take it on. Like if he switches it in on me and doesn't expect me to, you know, take it very well. Uh, this is really my only, the only thing I have for Thunderous other than just offensively checking it. So the Assault Vest is definitely important. And maybe I can surprise live from Nidoqueen and hit it with an Earthquake as well as uh, this just can help with Cobalion since it shouldn't be able to Okomi since it's not a Z-move user and I can Earthquake it. So coverage just kind of hits everything pretty well other than uh, I think it's Vaporeon, it's just, it, you know, walls this, but I'm not as worried about Vaporeon. And then here's the even worse blunder I make, <laughs> is uh, Gliscor that's meant to be toxic, you know, or with poison heal, and as you can see it is Hypercutter, so obviously I you know, did not mean for that, because this was meant to <laughs> make sure I don't lose to Scizor. And uh, yeah, it's actually going to take damage, so that's really unfortunate, but like I said, it's uh, I didn't notice this until in the battle, so obviously I'm not going to change it right now for the team builder, but yeah, <laughs> it was meant to have speed up to Gardevoir just so I could get damage off, like I don't Oko Gardevoir or like Nidoqueen by any means, but if they're offensive, then I can at least get some good damage off on them, so that's what I wanted the speed for, and the defense lets me at least, you know, if it's a not an offensive Scizor, it lets me uh, take it on better, and obviously I'll speed offensive Scizor regardless, so uh, Sword Stance lets me you know, take on the Scizor because Fire Fang does like no damage because Gliscor is actually kind of weak, and Mega Scizor is super bulky, so I figure that I didn't need the Ice Fang because I could use Earthquake on Zygarde since it's not as fat as Mega Scizor. However, and it's not as likely to be run as fat as Mega Scizor since it has Roost, and Zygarde does not, but I needed Roost, and, you know, in a perfect world, I would want to be these plus Ice Fang, but obviously, four moves. So yeah, this is going to be not as useful as I hoped, you know, because it's obviously not Poison Meal, so that's pretty unfortunate, but next up we have... Uh, Keldeo here with Hydro Pump, Secret Sword, Calm Mind, Taunt, with max speed to speed tie the Cobalion. And Taunt is for the Vaporeon, so it can't really do anything back to me beyond like synchro, synchro noise, which I do know it gets, but uh, that's, you know, it's not a huge threat if it does synchro noise me. Like, I, if I Calm Mind up on it, then. Uh, that's fine, and otherwise, you know, I'd be I'd more concerned of like a toxic or a roar. So I have the taunt here, and uh, you know, water plus fighting hits everything pretty well. So I didn't I didn't think I needed the ice coverage necessarily, and I could always taunt um, Zygarde, so it can't set up on me since I don't have the ice move. But then, uh, and the reason I would taunt it is because. My Scarfer speed ties it, and that's something that is a big risk that I'm taking. However, I'm intent on making sure it, it can't set up at all. So that's why everything has an ice move, or at least a way to take it on, being the, well, at least I thought with the Gliscor, but being defensive enough. But uh, yeah, pretty much everything else has an ice move, or just, a t or taunt in Keldeo's case, but this has coverage for the whole team other than Scizor being Draco, Ice Beam, Earth Power, Flash Cannon, it's max speed to speed tie with Zygarde so that, you know, even if it is max speed and somehow gets to it, then I you know, at least have a 50-50 chance. So, this otherwise it's just a great revenge killer. You know, it, it definitely makes sure I don't lose to, uh, like, non uh, plus speed boosting you know, item or Agility, Thunder's T, it's great for Nidoqueen, 
it helps with Cobalion, like it's just absolutely amazing. And uh, Flash Cannon can take the DNC and the Gardevoir as well as the Sneasel, so uh, yeah, I think that this is absolutely amazing against him and should just revenge kill almost everything other than the Scizor. Then lastly we have, it seems like the Mon that I bring so often like much more than I ever anticipated when I drafted it, but I just love using this, is Salazzle with the Fire Blast, Sludge Wave, Hidden Power, Ice, and Toxic. With the Expert Belt, I thought about running Hidden Power Seal and then running Dragon Pulse. However, the damage output is significantly less against Zygarde, and so I figured that the hidden power, uh, hidden power Ice would just be better off than running Dragon Pulse plus uh, Hidden Power Steel. And I thought about you know Z-Move, obviously, as I'm not running Z-Move, but Extra Belt just provided a lot better damage all around. So I just like you know, being able to attack, attack, attack with this, as I don't really see myself being a little nasty pull on anything. So if I do think I'm going to force a switch, I can Toxic the fatter mons and with corrosion obviously i can toxic anything so it doesn't matter we switch it into everything can get toxic being a poison type or a steel type doesn't matter so i figured that that just might have more utility than nasty plot so hopefully i don't uh end up losing to like dnc or something just for not having the hidden power steel on this but i do have the flash cannon and the bullet punch elsewhere so i'm not too worried about dnc and that is the team, so I will be back with Team Preview. And we are back with Team Preview as my opponent has decided to bring the Zygarde, Cobalion, Thunderous T, Mega Scizor, Vaporeon, and Dancy. So I definitely am scared of, of this team as it does have some big threats, as especially Thunderous being, at least in my mind, the big set to the team that I brought with Zygarde and uh, Megasys are just being annoying and then the Vaporeon being a potential issue as it does beat a good chunk of my team so I do have to be careful that uh, if it is you know like a standard defensive set I do have to keep Keldeo around and also the Kankaskan to be able to try to KO it but I'm going to lead off with Metagrosis it's one of the only mons that doesn't lose to Thunderous and uh, I do predict that correctly as he does lead the Thunderous and he gets off a T-Bolt as I Ice Punch as uh, he doesn't do too much to me but I do a good chunk and now I don't know who choice or not but I'm going to go into uh, Gliscor to get my uh, Toxic Orb off but I'm going to switch out immediately into, immediately into Slazzle because obviously if he has HP Ice he's going to go for it so this lets me just go for the Sludge Wave as I assume the Vaporeon or the DNC is coming in and this does a ton and so this is clearly offensive Vaporeon so that does now allow me to play Keldeo a little more aggressively however I don't know if this is Specs I don't know if this is you know Scarf I, I mean whatever it may be uh but I don't really have great water resist now that I'm like looking at it I mean like I I I'm kind of forced into my Keldeo to switch into it, which is kind of funny. But he does go for the Surf, it does a good amount of damage. Uh, he's not specs based off that damage, but I'm not really sure what's set. So I'm just going to go for the Secret Sword just to do damage, because obviously if he stays in, that's that's going to do a good amount of damage. And he goes into this for revealing that it's like max defense or close to it. And so I can just go into my uh, Gliscor as it's designed for it and then this is where I realize I'm not actually poisoning Hill so my, gl my Gliscor is actually just killing itself and uh, he goes back into the the Vaporeon and goes for Baton Pass as I switch back into the um, Keldeo and he goes into oddly enough the the Thunderous which I didn't really understand because then I can Secret Sword as uh, I think he was trying to get health back with baiting the water move and then he reveals he's actually Scarf, and he does do use the synchro noise, which you know I knew about, but I didn't really, I wasn't sure if we'd actually bring it. But it does do a good chunk of damage. But I do knock out the Vaporeon, and so now in comes the uh, Zygarde. So he goes for E Speed, it doesn't actually knock me out, 
as I go for the taunt. So I know this is obviously not banded because that would have easily KO'd me as I don't have much bulk. And so then I can just go right into my uh, the score. I see E speeds again because I'm not worried about him setting up on me and I'm again slowly killing myself. <laughs> as then I can go out into my uh, into my Kyurem as I don't think he's going to go for the dragon move as he actually reveals the Hidden Power Ice so that's pretty cool but I can just Ice Beam him and knock this out. And uh, he goes into Cobalion and I'm actually going to make the aggressive switch right into Solask because I don't know that it can really do anything to me unless he's got like Stone Edge and he wouldn't go for it at this point so he actually reveals the Calm Mind but I'm just going to Fire Blast because although it can live you know he has to have like Hidden Power Ground or you know something some Hidden Power to hit me really hard or I guess Volt Switch maybe but I don't think he wants to Volt Switch out with those boosts if he has it so it does go into the DNC after to set up his rocks as it forces me into the Gliscor as I go for the fire thing here just because I don't want the Thunderous to come in as he goes for Moonblast and knocks me out and uh, or well the Toxic, my own Toxic really knocks, his, knocks me out unfortunately but this allows me to go into Metagross I can just bullet punch to it KO it as he goes for Earth Power which is not going to knock me out thanks to that Assault Vest and so now that the Dancy's down there's just the Thunderous, which I know is not Scarfed, and the Cobalion that is uh, Calm Mind. So then he goes into Thunderous as I don't want him to set up or anything, so I just go for Ice Punch as he can knock me out. Then I can go into Salazzle, and I go for the HP Ice purely because if he wants to switch, at least he gets some damage off rather than Sludge Wave, and I don't want to risk missing the Fire Blast there. So then now I'm going to go for the Fire Blast as he reveals to be Aukaberry, actually, and he does live just barely and he misses the focus blast but that would not have killed me and I can just fire blast to win the game so that's a solid 4-0 victory here where I you know, had control the whole way and I think that you know it went really well I think that since it was offensive Vaporeon that it kind of hindered his uh, defense against my Salazzle and I do wish I was uh, HP Steel instead of Ice and Dragon Pulse with the four moves being probably better than Toxic since I, he brought an offensive team, but I, you know, it was good to be guarded against a bulkier build. But yeah, I, I'm glad to finally win again in, in Hive since it has been quite a while. Been keep losing like 1-0 and 2-0, but keep but my wins are all 4-0 and above so differential is really nice so actually I do still have a good chance to make playoffs hilariously enough because in my conference there's an undefeated team and then everyone else is actually 500 or below so you know at worst I'm only one game behind uh, the division leader after this week so that's nice and then on the in the other division within the conference the other teams are uh, three and three as, as well going in this week. So if, if both of them are obviously three and four at the end, that's great. If not, if they're you know four and three, it's still you know within contention. So only one game out of playoffs right now, which is great. And I you know if I can continue this and play better, my differential is going to be just better than everyone else's because I keep winning big. So hopefully we can do that. And hopefully we can make playoffs and maybe upset everyone in playoffs. <laughs> but until then, thank you for watching. Bye!